Good evening everybody and welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to tackle the sound of Chicago blues. I've put together a lead study that incorporates a lot of my favourite elements of that real gritty early electric blues era. There'll be elements of Otis Rush, B.B. King, Freddie King, Hubert Sumlin, Albert King, Mickey Baker, as well as some slightly more modern players like Mike Bloomfield, Jimi Hendrix and Junior Kimbra. As always, the goal here is to really see if we can embody that authentic vintage sound of the Chicago blues era. I'm using a fantastic backing track by the Cinelli brothers. I'll provide a link to their backing track packs in the description. Well worth checking those out. This one's in the key of C sharp, so not necessarily the most friendly key for a guitar player, but if you're used to playing in jazz keys, then it's not too much of an issue. Now make sure to get hold of the lesson materials for this at the links in the description. Because this is kind of an intricate lead piece, it'd be much easier if you can follow along with my tab sheet rather than me describe in detail every single note and finger position. You can get the lesson materials at my Patreon link or at the Gumroad link if you just want to buy a one-off lesson. So with all of that said, let's dive in. For our first phrase, we're starting firmly within the C-sharp minor pentatonic, shape one. <laughs> First thing we're going to do is take that 12th fret of the B string and bend it up a whole tone. Now straight away we're going to talk a bit about technique here. One of the most important elements of playing blues is your vibrato, especially how you add it on top of a string bend. So get very comfortable with that idea. So first of all obviously the important thing is to establish the correct pitch on the bend. So we're going to bend this B note up a whole tone to C sharp. Now make sure you can lock that in, and think of that height on the bend as our ceiling. We're not going to go above it now, but to add vibrato we're going to let the string drop below it a little bit and then climb back to it. It's important that when you get your vibrato going, you have a ceiling and a floor that stay consistently at the same height. So the idea is that we're going to bend up to that C-sharp ceiling, and then drop down from it and back to it over and over again, trying to get the accuracy really dialed in. Now again, make sure the vibrato is coming purely from the wrist and not the fingers. Your fingers should be slanted like this at an almost 45 degree angle to the fretboard. And all of the vibrato comes from the rotating of the wrist, not from the fingers pushing the string. The fingers are just placeholders. You can add fast vibrato or slow Dave Gilmore-esque vibrato. Practice doing both. Okay, so I won't speak about vibrato in any more detail, but I'll probably do a dedicated video on the technique for my Patreon page. Also, feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. So once we've played our bend and added the vibrato on top, we play this. So that little phrase there again is mostly minor pentatonic with the exception of one note. We're adding the ninth in. ending with two more of that same bend from earlier. Now adding the 9 is great because it works all the time pretty much, whether you're in a major or minor key, that note adds a nice bit of flavour. You can do little hammer-ons and pull-offs to and from it. Also don't overlook the simplicity of this little two-note pickup line. It gets everywhere in the Chicago blues sound, just simply the ninth fret of the B string to the ninth fret of the E string. And that's what we play next. We're going to bounce back and forth between those notes and play this little phrase. So again, I'm adding the 9 in there, but also the 6 on the B string. If we look at how that falls within the minor pentatonic, where you're going to have the 9th fret and the 12th fret on those top two strings, we're simply replacing the 12th fret with the 11th fret at that point, which is major pentatonic, C sharp major pentatonic. And then we're back to that 11th fret on the top string where we're going to bend it a whole tone. All these bends have to sound quite intense. You've got to be able to really bend and whip the string rather than too smooth of a bend. It's got to have this kind of whip to it. It's also really important to do what I call a raked bend, where you rake through dead muted strings until you reach the note that you want to strike, like this. 
makes a huge difference, as I'm sure you can hear. Adds a real bark at the front end of the note. With the blues, things like that are as important as your note choice sometimes. It's more about the, the feel and the attitude that you play these notes with. Now this next one's a real classic blues lick. We're going to bend that 11th fret of the G string a full step, and then go to the 9th fret of the B string, 9th fret of the E string, back to the 9th fret of the B string. And then bend the 12th fret again on the B string with some vibrato on top of it. This little run of notes. You can do a lot with it. It's a really classic piece of blues vocabulary that you should have under your fingers. You can cycle it around and play it kind of fast. Really useful little bit of vocabulary. So we do that twice and then we play this little phrase. Which again is targeting notes from outside of the minor pentatonic, but they're notes that I know will add a good flavour and are very typical of this style. So this would be the sixth again, where I'm bending it a half step to the flat seven before dropping it back. And do a similar thing at the eighth fret of the G string, bending up a half step to become the minor third, then down to the root. And then we chuck this on the end, which is a really common blues thing that we've spoken about quite a bit on this channel. Minor to major third hammer on. The difference here is that I'm, I'm accompanying it with the top two notes of that major triad as well. So when you play it, bar the top three strings at nine, hammer on to ten on the G, without blocking out the top two strings. This next one's a bit of a Hendrixism. We're going to play the eleventh fret of the A string first, and then hammering on from nine to eleven on the D, but along with the ninth fret of the G and B strings. So you want to bar the uh, ninth fret on the D, G and B, hammer on to the 11th fret of the D string. Similar to the previous thing we did, you've got to make sure you're not blocking out those top two notes when you hammer on. Get the finger arched over and hooked. And then we do a little reverse rake back down that shape, 9, 9, 9, 11, slide the 11 to 9. It's fast, slowed down. And then we're going to grab six on the G string. So now you've got this beautiful clash of notes. Sus4 and root of the C sharp. Unsus the four, so it resolves beautifully back to your third. Sounds really nice if you do a pull off from that nine to eight on the A string, whilst keeping that G string ringing, remember. I'd recommend kind of getting used to that as a move. To me, that's been really useful over the years. Probably one of my most overused licks, to be fair. Minor to major third, and then grab the root up here behind that shape. Always sounds really cool on the end of a lick. So back to that lick that we played. And the next phrase, we're going to stay in this position we've ended up in and play a bit of major pentatonic. Nice and easy to find that kind of a box shape. If you can visualize your root on the G string, first finger at the sixth fret. Remember we're in C sharp here, so there's your root. You've got this little shape, which really is outlining a C sharp major triad in first inversion. Very Hendrixy. You can break that down into individual notes, and you've basically got yourself the major pentatonic scale. And we're just going to use this little snippet of it. When we bend this note, we're bending back into the minor pentatonic. Then we play the note from the minor pentatonic. Interestingly, bending that a half tone to get back to the major pentatonic, or close to it at least. We don't go all the way into that major third, but we get close. So that phrase would sound like this. That's a huge part of the blues sound as well, mixing and blending, you know, the major and minor pentatonic scales. Again, this is something I'll go into more depth on in a dedicated lesson on the Patreon. 
Uh, it's quite a deep subject, but for now, just get used to this idea of thinking of them as almost interchangeable. Now for the next note of that lick, I'm going to find this same note again, but on the B string. And again, just give it maybe a quarter bend. And then come down the minor pentatonic and do one of these fast little pull-offs. Six pulling off to four, pick the D string. And I do that with a quick up and down. These little fast gestures, again, are punctuation marks in a language. You know, the blues is a language, and these things are essential to make it sound authentic. So just to clarify, we're in shape four here of your C-sharp minor pentatonic. Now we're going to stay within that shape for the next lick and play this. Which is climbing through the scale from the D string. When we reach the minor third, again, we're going to hint at the major third, but not quite get to it. It's all about that gray area between minor and major third. And then get the little finger on to play the next scale note. Then come down the scale. And then we slide down the whole tone. Hammer on minor to major third. Down your major triad. So again, it helps if you know your triads here. I'm thinking C sharp, major triad. Now on the very tail end of that phrase, you hear the major third again but I get it this time on the A string, 8th fret. So I'm going to play this. Just a little subtle slide up to that major third and let it cut off really fast. Then we're going to use that little snippet of the major pentatonic again. Get some hefty vibrato going on the first finger, BB King style. Again, it's got to be from the wrist. Notice how the thumb isn't even on at the back there. You've got to kind of pivot the hand on the bottom part of your palm here, where the palm and the index finger meet. Make sure that's making contact with the bottom of your fingerboard and that you're just rolling and pivoting from there while the first finger just is a placeholder on the string. Again, a crucial part of the blues sound. You can't play a convincing blues without good vibrato. It's so important. Then we continue this kind of build over the major pentatonic and move up to here. So we're thinking back in our original position. And in fact, you could be visualizing a C-sharp major chord or a major triad, sliding into the major third, playing the fifth, and then doing a very subtle little hammer-on at the end to the sixth. Another really important part of the language, these little almost sharp intakes of breath after a phrase. They're just little pull-offs or hammer-ons to give you a, a ghost note at the very end of the phrase. Sounds really cool if you do it after a long-held note. Just adds a little bit of subtlety. So, so far our build sounds like this. And then we add another very similar phrase on the end of that. Again, just bending that sixth upper semitone to your flat seven. Before coming down to the major third. Back to the fifth, another one of those subtle little hammer-ons at the end. So now our major pentatonic build sounds like this. Again, if you fancy getting hold of lesson materials for this, do check out the links in the description. I have a Patreon page where for a small monthly cost you can get access to all of my lessons. This includes tab and notation in Guitar Pro and PDF formats, as well as backing tracks. Or you can go to the Gumroad link to make a one-off purchase for this lesson in particular. As always, I appreciate your support very much. Thank you guys. So now we're about to start our second 12 bar solo. We've done that build that's climbed us up the fretboard. Now we're going to tackle that dusty end of the neck and play this phrase. Again, that's the major pentatonic, C-sharp major pentatonic. Which is the same thing as your A-sharp minor pentatonic. Just make sure you do think of it as C-sharp major pentatonic, because that allows you to target the correct notes for this context, you know, the C-sharp being one of those notes. 
So within that shape, we're just chunking it down to one very specific little group of three notes. People call this the blues triangle or the BB King box. There's all sorts of nicknames for this stuff. But here's how I think about it. So 15 on the G string, first finger at 14 on the B, followed by the third finger on that same string at the 16th fret. So it's a little triangular shape. Now for me, I'm just thinking about this in proximity to the root. So C sharp is here, so there's our root. And I know that here I've got my sixth if I want it. And then that here this would be your second or your ninth. And that's a good note to bend. And bend it up to the major third if you bend a whole step. Or minor third if you do a half step. Got a lot of options here. What we do is a whole step bend. And then we go one and a half. Which takes us to like a sus four. then come back down with a bit more of that vibrato and then we do the BB King quote where we're doing the same notes again but we move that top part of the triangle up to the thinnest string which of course would be your fifth of your C sharp it's a brilliant little collection of notes that and again this really shows how important technique is You can get away of doing very little more than that as long as your bends and your vibrato are really sweet sounding. I mean, check it out. If I just play around in that zone for a second. Beautiful. I mean, I could do that all day long. Just that small collection of notes is enough sometimes. Next part of the phrase. Another one of these little double stop things, barring the 12th fret on the top two strings. Coming on to 14 on the B string, coming back down and back into your shape one minor pentatonic. Now another really important bit of blues vocabulary that incorporates some major pentatonic elements. So that would be the fifth, the sixth, and the root. And then into the major third from the minor third first. That little run, specifically the five, the six, and the one, that's a really important bit of rock and roll, rockabilly, swing blues vocabulary. You know, you'll hear that kind of stuff all of the time. thing to get under the fingers. I mean, you can basically just plaster it on the front end of any minor pentatonic or blues lick that you already use. Sounds really cool. So back to our solo, this is what we play. Which is really just minor to major third with that little double stop thing again, barring the ninth fret. To the sus four, back to the minor to major with a little trill. Root root again at the top. Another really important bit of blues language. Bouncing freely between the root note in various octaves. This next phrase is really great. It's very much a Mickey Baker kind of a vibe. Where you take the blues note, the flattened fifth, at the 12th fret of the G string, combine it with the 9th fret on the top two strings and rake through them. And just come down the minor pentatonic. And then we go back to a bit of that Hendrixy stuff we spoke about. We just kind of stagger our way down through the minor pentatonic. Sliding down. And then one of those little pull offs again to a ghost note at the very end. Now we play this, where we're bending the sixth up to the flat seven again grabbing the flat seven of our four chord. Because at that point we're on the G flat seven. So we're growing flat seven and third, the tritone. And then we just follow that tritone down through the octaves. Then we're back to our shape four minor pentatonic. where we do this little bend, it's kind of a country bend, bending the seventh fret of the B string, and then matching the pitch of that note at the fourth fret of the top E, before coming back down. 
And then again, just descending through the scale a little bit. But making a point to go minor to major third again. And then we have another one of those little whispered notes. Just a very subtle little slide uh, to a staccato note at the second fret. And then back to a bit of shape four. Now we move along to shape five, where we play this phrase that really falls comfortably under the fingers. Which again is just a C-sharp minor pentatonic, but with the blues note added, that flattened fifth. So really this would be the C-sharp minor blues scale. And then we just tie it into shape one. With this slide along the D string from nine to 11. And then we play that little lick from earlier. Now to close out our solo, we just do a bit of what I refer to as chaos playing. Uh, this is going to be tabbed out neatly on the sheet, so don't worry about that. But I'll just approximate it here right now. We move along into shape two. And then we're just coming down back to shape one. Messing around with this little grey area in between the shapes. And then doing some more of that Hendrixy kind of rakey stuff. Such a cool sound, I'm gonna to have to break that down for you in a bit more detail here, I think. So we're starting with a minor to major third hammer on on the G string again, along with the top two strings at the ninth fret, so you're barring those three strings. And then reverse rake as you descend through your minor pentatonic scale. So that's a pull off, 11 to nine on the D string, and then land with a downstroke on the 11th fret of the A. Doesn't have to be too clean. Like I say, it's hard to do this slowly, but... And then just try and repeat that kind of motion on the next couple of strings. Again, just thinking about the notes that would be in your minor pentatonic scale. You can even start with a bit of major pentatonic on the top two strings. Nine hammering to 11 on the B string, while getting that nine ringing on top. Sounds pretty cool. And as far as things that need to be broken down in detail, I think that about covers it. Okay, so for a bit of tone talk, I'm using my ES335. Uh, I have Sunbear PAF pickups in here. They sound great. I'm on the middle position. Everything wound all the way up. And uh, for the recording there, I was running into my Marshall SV20 uh, mini Plexi amp. Sounded awesome. Uh, I had the natural overdrive going on in there. I had it quite loud. But for the lesson, I've been using my Lazy J20 amp and a Vemuram Jan Ray overdrive pedal. I have Diodario NYXL 11 gauge on here. I love those strings. 11s on this guitar just feel perfect. The bends are still really comfortable, but the tone is just that little bit more muscular. I'm using a Jazz 3 pick, and I'm making sure to strike the strings pretty hard to get that percussive punch on the front end of the note. Gives it a real push if you do that kind of rest stroke technique again that we've spoken about in some of the swing videos. So yesterday I was editing my video and I realized that I totally forgot to do a recommended listening section. Uh, so I thought we may as well do that now. So first up for recommended listening, BB King, Live at the Regal. So this is a really iconic live blues record, just full of amazing performances. Uh, Every day I have the blues, how blue can you get? You upset me baby, sweet little angel. So many great songs on here. Definitely worth checking out if you've not heard it before. Captures a real energy. It's amazing. I'm also going to recommend that you check out some Howlin' Wolf. Uh, this is a compilation record I've got called Blues From Hell. It's kind of his best known songs. It's got some great stuff on here. You know, Spoonful, Evil, Smokestack Lightning, How Many More Years, and my personal favorite, Who's Been Talking. The groove on that one is just amazing. The guitar playing is split between Willie Johnson and Hubert Sumlin. Two of my favorite blues players, brilliant record. I'm also gonna recommend checking out Otis Rush. For sure, one of my absolute favorite blues men. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any of his stuff on vinyl, but there are some great compilations out there. I've got one called I Can't Quit You Baby, and I got it many years ago back on iTunes. Uh, just look for Otis Rush and you can't go wrong. A standout tracks for me would be All Your Love, I Can't Quit You Baby, uh, Double Trouble, and my personal favorite, Checking On My Baby. Really dark and spooky kind of blues, that one. Another huge influence on my blues playing would be Mickey Baker. His most well-known album, The Wildest Guitar, is a brilliant album and definitely worth checking out, if a little more jazzy. 
but today I'm going to recommend a compilation called In the 50s, Hit, Git and Spit. This is a big collection of his recordings from the 1950s and it really represents that early Chicago blues sound so well. Really searing and visceral and aggressive. A couple of standout tracks would be Riverboat and Caledonia 56. The energy on those recordings is fantastic and it's kind of got a jump bluesy feel as well with some brass sections in there. Just a wicked album. Also, check out Mike Bloomfield. He was really well known for playing with Bob Dylan and the Paul Butterfield Blues Band. But also check out the Super Session record with Al Cooper and Stephen Stills. Bit of a super group. The standout on that record would certainly be Albert's Shuffle. That's the first track. A great tone, great phrasing and really tasteful playing. Another recommended listening would be anything Peter Green and Fleetwood Mac. You know, the early Fleetwood Mac years. Peter Green is definitely my favourite British blues guitar player. Just incredible phrasing, beautiful touch, so soulful. Check out a track called Jumping at Shadows, originally written by Duster Bennett, but the Peter Green take on it is so good. The guitar playing is, in my opinion, some of the best playing he ever recorded. Also, Need Your Love So Bad, of course, is a very well-known example of his beautiful phrasing and melodic sense. So check that out too. Okay, now finally, two more recommendations. I've done more than usual here, uh, but I just had to mention all of these. Junior Kimbra. You've got to listen to Junior Kimbra. The playing and the tone, so tasteful, and there's such a vibe about that music. It's hypnotic. Check out some videos of him on YouTube. There's some videos from the 90s of him playing live in juke joints, and it, the vibe and the energy is just incredible. It blows your mind. And on that same note, let's get right up to date. Check out the Black Keys album from a couple of years back called Delta Cream. They do a lot of Junior Kimbra material on there and some R.L. Burnside stuff as well. Um, they do it really tastefully, like they keep the feel in there and they get some proper juke joint players involved as well. Definitely a standout modern blues record for me, uh, and that's saying something. Right, so that does it for the recommended listening. If you get a chance to check any of that stuff out, do let me know what you think down in the comments below. Or if you have any other suggestions of things that you think I might be interested in, do let me know. I'm always looking to explore. Okay, we'll hand back over to the past me and get this video wrapped up. Okay guys, well thanks for joining me for this lesson on the Chicago Blues Sound. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do let me know in the comments what you think and how you're getting along with it. Uh, please do remember to like and subscribe. I'd really like to try and get up to about 10,000 subscribers within the next six months or so. Uh, so if you can help me to achieve that goal, I'd be massively grateful. Do remember to check out my Patreon if you want to get hold of lesson materials and loads of bonus stuff. We've also got a really good community feel going on over there now. We've got a lot of really nice, like-minded guitar players and lots of good conversation and interaction going on. So don't miss out. All right, thanks for joining me, guys, and I'll see you next week.